Hello and welcome to a new video. I hope that you're having an amazing day and in today's video I'll be giving you beginner tips on how to paint rose arrangements. Let's get into it. So to begin with I start with the roses. Before we start painting them there are quite a few things we need to bear in mind. When thinking about how I will arrange the roses I usually paint them in odd numbers but in this video I'll be showing how to do a three and four rose arrangement to give you an idea if you want to do it in even or odd numbers. Although I will say it is easier to balance odd numbers and makes for a better composition at times. Not particularly sure why, but it's kind of a thing. Anyways, the second tip is to paint the roses close together because it can be awkward trying to paint stems or leaves or whatever else you wish to add to your arrangement in between the roses. So to avoid this, keep your roses huddled together with less of a gap. Now the third tip is size. It's important that in an arrangement you don't have all the roses exactly the same size. In my arrangements you'll see that I have slightly varied the sizes. This makes the rose arrangement more natural and interesting to look at. Again, on the same lines as tip 3, you should try and vary the rose colours or tone. This is so that you can tell the roses apart from each other. Variation, even if subtly, I find is important for arrangements. When painting your roses different sizes, bear in mind that the different sizes should be noticeable but not dramatic, as this will create imbalance in your arrangement and it can be hard to pull off. Unless you have multiple different flowers of different sizes, but since this video is focusing on rose arrangements, they should be different sizes but not dramatic. If you want to see a tutorial on floral arrangements with different flowers, you can check out my tutorial on this in the information card top right of this video. The tip of varying the sizes of your flowers is referring to flowers that have fully bloomed, if you know what I mean. If you want to add buds or roses that are starting to bloom, you can add these around your larger flowers larger flowers first, then leaves and other little details you want to add later. I didn't include buds as this is quite a simple and small arrangement, but feel free to add buds to yours. If you're unsure where to add them and if they will look good, you can pencil sketch them in first and see if you like it. Again, another tip on variation is angles. In an arrangement, the flowers are rarely all facing the exact same direction and seen at the same angle. So you'll need to vary the direction your roses are facing, at least the roses that are right next to each other. This will give more dimension to your arrangement than a straight on view of each rose. I'll get onto how to paint the roses shortly as these tips are important to know before painting. So, for the free rose arrangement on the left, from top to bottom, you can see the rose is facing to the right, the second rose to the left, and then the third rose to the right again. The four rose arrangement on the right has all the roses facing different directions and has pink and red roses. When using different colours, you need to balance them out throughout the arrangement. What I mean by this is that ideally you don't want two roses at the top and then two roses at the bottom. Of course you can do this if you want, but generally speaking different coloured rose arrangements will have each colour equally positioned around the arrangement so that there isn't too much of one colour in one area. Just quickly before I move on to how to paint the roses and leaves, don't forget to like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. I upload weekly Saturday beginner watercolour and drawing videos, so don't forget to check out my other videos too for more beginner ideas and tips. Okay, back to the video. Didn't realise there would be this many rules, but these are very important, just as important as knowing how to paint the flowers itself, which I will begin giving tips on now. There's also quite a few, but watching how I paint along with these tips should help you out. Now, with the roses, the overall shape you should aim for is a circular oval shape, so wider and rounder. I always start with the centre. 
So when imagining the overall shape of the roses and the angle you wish the rose to face, you need to position the centre accordingly. So if you want the rose to face the right, the centre needs to be positioned more to the right of the overall shape. This will mean that there will be wider and longer petals at the left of the centre and shorter and thinner petals on the right of the centre to give the illusion that the rose is turning to face the right edge. So, to put it simply, whichever angle you want your rose to face, the petals on that edge facing that direction needs to be thinner and the center of your rose needs to be shifted closer to that edge. You will be able to see in the roses that I have painted to better illustrate what I mean. So when painting roses, you want to paint the petals in rows in circular motion around the centre, slowly building it up, bearing in mind to keep the petals thinner or thicker depending on the position you want your roses to face, i.e. rows facing to the right, the petals right of the rose need to be thinner and shorter. When building up the layers of the roses, you need them to look like stretched out scales that curve around the centre of the rose. Another way I can think to describe this is how bricks are layered, where you place one brick halfway in between two bricks. You need to do the same with your petals. This doesn't need to be perfect, but essentially don't stack the roses right on top of each other where each petal stops and starts at the same point. One petal should layer in between two petals. When painting your petals, in order to tell the petals apart from each other, you should leave a gap between them. In this particular painting, I left a lot of gaps, so it kind of has this stained glass look. But how much white space you leave is up to you. But I advise that you paint leaving a gap between most of your petals, and then while the paint is still wet, and you decide you want less white space, you can go in later to slowly fill in the white space according to your preference. The next tip to bear in mind with painting roses is that as the petals layer gradually and they are further away from the centre, they should be longer and wider. The general shape of rose petals painted in this style is similar to a crooked pea pod, wide at the centre and thinner at the ends. As the petals are further from the centre, the centre of the petal should be wider. Right, so how do we do thin and thick strokes? For thin strokes, tilt your paintbrush upright so that you are only using the tip of your paintbrush and can get a fine tip to paint in your strokes. For thicker shapes or strokes, you can simply paint in the outline and fill in the shape with a wet brush and a good amount of paint. If you have a thicker paintbrush, which I don't recommend for a beginner beginner, but if you're comfortable with using a larger brush, you can paint petals with less strokes by adjusting your pressure pushing down on your brush. Mind you, this is quite gentle and don't push down too hard with your brush as this can ruin it. But essentially, if you want a thicker stroke, then the more pressure you should put on your page with your brush. Right, that's all for the roses. Now the easier part is the leaves. For this, I drew in the leaves with pencil first to see what would look good as I'm not as confident to jump straight in with my paintbrush. I have drawn two different kinds of leaf branches. My larger leaf branches have leaves that are more or less symmetrical and are wide, formed by two curved lines meeting at two points, which is a very complicated way just to explain the leaf shape. When drawing them as a branch, I normally draw each branch with a set of three leaves, with each leaf of the branch different sizes and pointing in different directions. 
Then I connect them with a thin line to form the branch, connecting the points that are closer to the roses. Then, with the smaller leaf branches, I paint a thin, slightly curved line, and at the end furthest away from the roses, I add a small leaf. Then going down the branch, I alternate between each side, adding a leaf that is the same size as the one at the end of the branch. You can leave white lines within your leaves that follow the length of the leaf, and you can also add your leaf veins. To do this, you can simply add a thin line halfway along the length of the leaf and alternate between each side, adding diagonal lines, as you can see me do. And that is all for this video. I hope that you learned something and at least had some fun with these rose arrangements. This did take me a few attempts to paint, as painting roses are more difficult than it looks, so do practice it as it takes a few tries. But these tips should help you out to get started. If you like this video and you want to see more, then subscribe for weekly Saturday videos where I upload beginner watercolour drawing videos. And as always, God bless and I'll see you later.